Okay, the first tutorial will be about how to set SketchUp up. You will need SketchUp to draw levels. First of all, you should go to Windows, uh, Preferences, Extensions, Install Extensions, um, and select the plugins that I've given down the links to. You have a bunch of RBZ files, you can install them, and you will have one RB file in your folder. You need to drag the RB file in your SketchUp folder manually by opening file path, go to the plugin subfolder and just drag and drop. Now you should reopen SketchUp and you will have a bunch of weird pop-ups probably. Mm, if you go to view, you should it should be called taskbars. You can enable which of these extensions you will see. And this is my setup. You should also enable this. This will give you a bunch of new symbols. Um, I will explain what these symbols do now. Wait a sec. So, um, well, first of all, the camera. If you press in the mouse wheel, you will get this thing. It allows you to rotate the camera. If you scroll in or out, you can zoom in or out, and you can also, by moving the mouse, control where the zooming will take you. So you can basically control the camera just with the mouse wheel. Um, let's d delete this woman, click on it and press delete. Um, these are the basic drawing things, the task, the, the bar around here. Let's start with this, you can draw a rect angle with this. Now you see um, it has one darker side and one brighter side. You are only allowed to draw on the bright side. The dark sides won't show up. So you right click this and turn face. And the bright side will be up and the dark side will be down. Um, the dark side will be called out in game so that's why you can't do that. You also have the pencil. With the pencil you can just draw random shapes on things. You have the circle. You should never use the circle because it causes a lot of polygons. Okay, let's make this a shape. Okay. Then you have this bow thing. You don't really need it. It also does a lot of polygons and is pretty useless. You have this thing, if you type in a number and then S and press enter, it will have that many vertices. For example, 3 or 4 or 5. And you can also, if you don't press S but M, you will get it in meters. Like this. Mm, this is the freehand tool, don't use it, it's even worse than the circle. You have the move tool, it allows you to move stuff. Uh, yeah, it's pretty weird to use, three dimensional sometimes. You have the push and pull tool. Um, if you have something selected, you can press escape to unselect it. With this, you can just push or pull stuff, obviously. Then you have the circle tool, uh, the rotate tool. You can rotate anything with this. Usually you want to rotate something usefully. For example, if I double click this, I select the face, uh, everything related to what I clicked. Like one click, double click and three clicks, it will select even more. Like so. So if I would now rotate it, it would not just destroy everything. You have the follow me tool which works in a weird way. For example, if you have a line like this and you just want to delete this stuff. Um, you want a shape like... I don't know, just anything like this. And you want to bend it around the line. You can use the follow me tool and it will do that for you. Like so. 
Then next up you have the scale tool. Just select something, use the scale tool and you can upscale it either in a direction or if you hold control, always proportional to the middle. Also you can on specific axis. Works also with control. Um, yeah, to show this tool I need to draw something. This basically offsets from the edges of the shape you are working with. Like so. Let's turn this quickly get above the scene. Then one of the plugins we use is the vertex editor, which is this. You can you have different things, you should experiment a bit with it. One of them is to just move the vertices. Then we have one thing for scaling. You can select a point from which you want to scale and then just, you know. I think it's understandable, I don't know how to explain it in words. Then let's select all of this. You should have tools. Loop subdivision smooth. This will make it quite high poly. It will look weird afterwards, but it can be good to give you a general shape. Like so. This is way too high poly for SM64. Now you will also encounter these things, where it's just one flat face, but it actually divided it into four faces, so you can fix that by going to plugins. Clean up and clean. You have a few options, do however you want. Um, and if you don't clean, it will delete it and make the model file smaller. <coughs> now you see these lines aren't through, so if it's not selected, it will just be a weird shape and you can't really see what you drew. For that, you go to view and in geometry and you can see it. What the lines action mean is if you now could select everything. Um, smooth edges you will get this bar. You can select at which angel angle the stuff will be smoothed. So if you go to view no edges this will look pretty blocky but if you smooth all of it, it won't be blocky. It can look good sometimes, but there are many situations in which smoothing too much will just look weird. So be careful with that. Mm. You can export your model by going to File, Export, 3D Model. If you do it the first time, you have to go to Options and check this. Yeah, this is my setup. You need to have this checked, otherwise the model will be rotated and look weird. It will um, it will show you how many polygon syllables has and how many textures. You should not look on this at this. Uh, this is just trivial information you don't need. This is the face count. <coughs> um, if Many people make the mistake that if they have a face like this, they will just start drawing shapes on it. Let me turn edges on, otherwise I can't see what I'm doing. Like so. Let's delete this. Pull something out stupidly. Now this will have a bunch of faces. Um, let's export this. Which is quite a lot for such a shitty small model. But if we move this and make it a component and move this, make it a component. Now SketchUp doesn't automatically connect these with each other anymore and the rectangle won't get subdivided by the other shapes anymore and it will reduce it significantly. You should do this a lot in your models. Also, um, sometimes shadings will get weird if you don't do that. 